All right, I've been asked again to do something with the Seaboard Team to show you how to deal with the errors in alignment, but also I'm going to show you how to take it apart, and then I'll show you the actual parts that I have modified, and then show you the errors and how I fix them. First, first thing I do is lower the tube slowly down by loosening these. Until it starts sliding down. There you go. So now it's in this position, it's more or less safe. We've got to take the weights off. Otherwise, it flies around. It's good to have grass around. Just chuck counterweights. Leave the gizmo on here. And now we're going to continue to unscrew. Make sure this is locked. And then shimmy it off. There you go. You can use a table, anything that's big enough and strong enough. Now it's off the mount. And I'm going to now turn the mount and we'll take a look at this. Okay? Look at. Wait, wait. Go. Okay, so now we're going to look at actually the modifications to the dovetail and to the saddle. And then I'll put it back together, point it, and show you what we were trying to do. So I discovered, first off, that there is what's classically known as a cone error right here where the spacing between the new ADM dovetail and the mount is such that you need to put some washers in here. And there's two of them in there adding up to three millimeters. That's the amount of error. Now, you might ask why didn't I use the Celestron ones? Well, they are just held on by two points here. They're really not very held on well. And if the screws are a little bit out of whack, then you can get a lot of error, and that's what I discovered. Now, I also needed to put onto here, uh, actually, uh, a guide scope. So, that was the first correction. So, there are screws in here in the ADM dovetail that allow you to move it back and forth depending on what you need. So, in this case, I needed more angle here, and this is the back, and that's the front telescope. So, I need the angle to go out, and you can see it's actually now more or less straight without those it's a little bit off second thing is back up here on the saddle so you would guess and most people believe that these are straight well the problem is these are probably straight and true these though could be a little bit out if the screws are off by just a half millimeter or so then you're going to get an angle this way so that's not considered cone angle but it's an error so how do you fix that shims and in fact, it's good I did this because my daughter and I just noticed that the other shim that's up here is loose. So I'm going to put it back on and glue it down and then reconnect the telescope together to get all the parts back together. What do shims look like? Just tiny little washers, pieces of metal. In fact, I need to clean off some of the Gorilla Glue that's stuck onto these. Here we go and just wide enough to add an angle to adjust for the air which i'll show you what the air was and what it is now okay so i'm going to put some gorilla glue right in there and i picked the two points here to be roughly 20 centimeters apart where these two mounting points are so essentially it's twisting the telescope slightly but it turned out it was off by a bit you may yours may not but it's worth taking a look at Okay, Okay. now I'm going to show you some results of what happened when I added those shims and then I'm going to show you then the telescope, the geometry of what's going on. So this is the classic cone error problem and it's fully assuming that the telescope itself, the OTA, and the axis of the mount are off only in the altitude direction. and that's part of the problem because there's no reason to believe that the actual um, dovetail and saddle are actually pointed exactly. Now I'm going to make a couple assumptions. One is, and we'll see whether it's correct, one is that the home position and the switch position, as it's called, on the Celestron are in fact true, that the mount itself is 
uh, 90 degrees to all axes. Um, I haven't seen that it's not, but I'm going to assume that. So that means that when the mount is pointed toward Polaris, or excuse me, the North Celestial Pole, that in fact it is true. And so the only errors then are with the OTA um, and its connectors. Um, so the first thing we're going to make sure is that we are in fact pointed to the North Pole. So that's an entirely separate issue is how do you get polar alignment. I tend to use two tools. I use either Pole Master, and I'll show you how I do that, or I use Sharp Cap. And so those ways I found both work and their measurement errors are pretty good given if you're using something like PHD2, which does look for any errors. And I think I got that down. So the real issue is, do you have an error in altitude, which is really called cone error, or do you have also an error in azimuth? And Professional telescopes, when they're first commissioned and, and engineered, look for these errors. So let me show you again what you're looking at. So the whole idea is that your telescope is either pointed up or down in altitude. And because that's all we're going to deal with here, we're not really using right ascension or declination. And the result is that when you move the telescope from the right or left side, east or west, this is the classic solution, then you end up seeing slightly different views of the sky. And in this case, if you would rotate around that axis and actually watch it, the stars would make little circles. Now, they're going to make circles no matter what because they're far away from the North Celestial Pole. But the difference is that your telescope will not point at the pole. Okay? And how do you fix this? Well, you adjust by shims in the altitude direction only, which I showed you as washers underneath the dove plate. Okay? So now let's look at some real data. I did this about a year ago, so I don't have the original data. I just have printouts. So, what are you looking at here? This is through a Malincam DS-10C, so I know its dimensions, and I know the focal length of the telescope. And what I did is I went to F2, so I put on the Hyperstar to get the widest angle, and right now this is about a degree and a half and about one degree. There's another possible error that can occur is that your camera, the actual chip is not exactly centered. And I think it's slightly above or below because the pink area is actually the sky glow that you're looking at. So what are you actually looking at here? And you can see it's a little bit above center. So what are you actually looking at here? Is this is an inverted color image. I could have made it black and white. So the sky, instead of being bluish, here in my light polluted area, this is pinkish. But what are these lines? Stars. And that big one is Polaris. What is the jog? Well, I basically turned on and off the RA rotation. So this is purely an RA rotation that you're seeing. This is not due to the Earth rotating. This is the mount twisting. And we'll talk about that when we go back to the mount. And what should happen here? The center of rotation down here, you can see it. And see, Polaris is not the North Star. The North Star, if you believe the mount, uh, is over here. I should say the North Star. The North Celestial Pole is there. So it's not in the middle. That's the error. And you can see the size of it. It was substantial when I first did this. Okay? Meaning that if I did this at F7, I can't even see where the North Celestial Pole is. And all I see here, or I really should call this the RA pole. So these errors here are the fact the telescope is pointing off away from it. Now you may get into, is it on the right? Is it on the left? Is it above, below? Not really important, except when you try to fix it, you're going to have to try to adjust it. And the idea is to take this rotation point and put it in the middle. So now actually you see the level of calculations I had to do. So I did that same thing again. The curves are a little different, but the point's about the same. And so by looking at the curves, you can sort of do a little geometry and say, the North Celestial Pole should be over here. And again, I made that assumption that the axis and the North Celestial Pole are about right. And I will show you, in fact, you can even compare that. So all these little calculations show that I was off by about half a degree, which is a lot. And this is why I think this is worth doing. Um, one of the issues, though, is you need to get a really wide view if you're that far off. Because if you go to F7, say, with a focal reducer, even worse, at F11 with that telescope native, 
you're only seeing a small part. But most of what you're seeing here are calculations as to how much I have to move, and we'll get to that in a minute. Now I moved it. So how did I move this? I just added washers in the angle going up. And I wasn't too careful here. I wasn't even, when I first did this, I wasn't even uh, level with the horizon, if you notice. So when I show you how to do this, I'll show you, make sure you're level with the horizon. If you are, then this error, everything would be square. But I basically moved from over here now to there. So I've improved it. I've gone now to a point where I'm a third of degree, 18 arc minutes. So I went from 32 to 18. And so now, again, this is Polaris. Here's the rotation of the stars near the pole. And what's happening now is I'm off again. So now I got to correct it again. And I had some error in the azimuth direction. Now, if you go to F7, this is what happens. The points of rotation can be way off. And it's in fact almost impossible to notice where you are. So you really want to take a wide angle view if possible, which means either a big chip, or in my case, I went to F2. It can be done in F7 if your telescope is more accurate than mine was initially. Okay, last couple of things you can do. Well, you can get a Palomar sky survey image inverted of the, near, the area near the pole. And here you're trying to find what are the stars near the pole because you can then go back to here and try to find the stars close to the celestial pole and in fact determine whether your rotation axis and the north celestial pole are very close. In my case I found they were close but you can see all I would end up seeing you know Polaris is over here in fact you can see it right on the edge. This is all you see because Polaris is about almost a degree away you can't really use it. You've got to focus in on these little stars compared to the picture you took and really see where you are. So doing this, you're gonna find out exactly how good your polar alignment is, exactly how good your mount are in, and, uh, and polar axis are, whether there's all sorts of errors coming in by doing this. So it's a better than just a flip over on one side. Finally, see Polaris is over there. This is what I have now. Uh, it's not perfect, but I've got it down to a point where I'm off by about one arc minute between the, the rotation axis and the North Celestial Pole. Okay, that's fine. That could be entirely due to polar alignment errors. And I'm a few arc minutes off, and in fact I improved it after this, I'm a few arc minutes off from the rotation axis and the center of the frame. So now that means when we do, and you can see it by the curves here, rotation axis here, here's the center of my, uh, where the telescope thinks is down the middle. And you see we're off by a little bit between rotation axis and the center of the frame. So bottom line is, what you have to do is really observe near the pole. Let's just this one back here. You have to really observe near the pole and see how far off you are uh, in this. And then you can fix it with appropriate tools. Okay? Okay, now we're back with the telescope and I want to show you the geometry of what these alignment errors are like. Cone error and azimuth error, call them the two. Uh, I'm going to make also a few assumptions on here. So I want to show you the geometry of the equatorial mount. As usual, what we're assuming in here is that the system is polar aligned. So I polar align using plate solving either through uh, Pole Master sitting up in front here or actually or on the dovetail or using Sharp Cap which does the same thing with its plate solving. I don't really care if you put the camera at this end or at the other end uh, at the Hyperstar setting. The assumption is there is a camera running uh, for this alignment. So assume the camera is in there, it's going on there. I'm also going to assume, until we see it worse, is that the mount itself is true, meaning when this axis here is in fact pointing at the North Celestial Pole. And the errors we're going to try to figure out is, is the uh, optical tube assembly in alignment with that? And as I've told you, I've run into problems where I believe that two kinds of errors can occur. We've done here on right here. Again, that this 
This is the cone error, which is an error in the as uh, excuse me in the altitude direction, can be corrected by putting in shims here, and then inside the saddle here, you can notice there's a little bit more area than there is there that I've actually adjusted it a little bit. So let me show you the geometry of what's going on and how people generally use this. So the first thing is we've set the telescope in its home switch setting. Again, that's making the assumption that the encoders in here know which way that is. And so the whole thing is aligned right now, except possibly the tube. So we're gonna focus just on the tube. So the classic way of doing this is to basically rotate in one direction and to make the system level by looking at the uh, weights on the mount or maybe the mount itself level. Some people have um, setting circles you can use. This system doesn't have a setting circle, but the idea is you go this way over here, right? And of course, now you go back the other way. And by looking at 90 degrees on both sides, you can find the cone error, which is the altitude. I'm gonna show you a different way of doing it. So it's gonna go back now to the home position. In fact, I'm going to stop it right here and actually make it go straight to the home position. Utilities, move to switch. Okay, so now we're going back to home or switch. Celestron sometimes calls it home, sometimes switch. So, what will happen now is, once we get to that point, if we have the camera in place and we're looking at the image, if everything works right, that you should be looking right at the North Celestial Pole. You're not likely, you're gonna be a little bit off. So what do you do then? Well, once you reach this position, camera in place, set an exposure for 10 to 15 seconds, and then what you're gonna do is just scroll. And as you scroll left or right, the image is gonna produce that star trail on your camera and you want to move it for about five or ten seconds or more so that you actually get mostly part of the turn so let's say you stopped it right there you've now created an image with that curve in it and if this is pointing at the pole this will not be pointing at the pole and you'll see the stars turn naturally you will in any situation but the center of that will not be the center that you've already picked out with the North Celestial Pole. So that's all you're really doing, is you're taking pictures while rotating left or right, and then noticing how far off you are. Now, how do you fix it? Let's go back. Let me back the switch. Once you put it back in the switch and look again at the image created, you'll be able to tell, oh, I need to either raise this part or the other part to get rid of the cone error, which is this one. What you, the other folks are not taking advantage of this is that you might have an azimuth error. And I see now when you're pointing this way, azimuth is this way and altitude's that way. And they correspond now to RA, turns in RA, and turns in declination because we're set up this way. So that's basically it. You use this system with the camera, and you have to get a big enough angle. And as I said, it really helps if your camera can see a not large enough part of the sky. So either you have a large chip down here, or in my case, you go to the front of the telescope and you run in prime focus with Hyperstar, and you get a big part of the sky. But one way or another, you're able to see all the errors and fix them at both ends. Thank you.